Okay, hello, welcome back to another video. Today we are playing Against the Move D4, and I'm going to show you a super interesting uh, line that we can be playing with C5 here. Um, I say line, I'm not really sure what my opponent's going to go for. Hopefully, they do go for D5. Excellent. Uh, knight to F6 here. I was going to say, hopefully not C3. It's a super boring line. They play C4. We seem to have given them a huge center, which is now reinforced here. But what we are going to do in this old Benoni is play the Benko Gambit, which, for those of you familiar, is the move B5 here. Super, super interesting Gambit. Um, they go B3, reinforcing the pawn instead of taking here. But now I'm just going to go G6, Bishop G7, and try to exploit this diagonal. I'm sure we'll see Bishop B2. There we go. Uh, Bishop G7 here. And again, you can still take if you want. I really... I do not mind. Please do. Be my guest. Um, and there's also, given that we've pushed c5, the potential for some queen to a5 check at some point. I think we are just going to play d6 first, actually. Um, this pawn structure is super reminiscent of many different Benko Gambit lines. Um, and we see bishop to d3. Okay. We aren't actually down any material. I'm thinking we could just play b4, a4, uh, or a5, a4. That might be, you know what, we're going to just lock this whole thing out. We win connect four. Let's go. And we're just going to get loads of space here. Absolutely loads of space on the uh, on the queen side. Just leaving my pieces here. We've got this huge pyramid. And once we play a4, maybe I force my a file open. The rook gets open. Okay, this is probably a bad idea because I'm about to get hit with like e5. Eh, oh well. A4 anyway. We are just going to send it. We are actually, absolutely going to send it. Um, you know what? If they don't take, I might just play A3. That would be so funny. Wait, E5, A3. Takes, takes, takes. Takes and queens? One sec. The rook comes here. I can play A3. And the bishop has to drop back. And then just in an endgame, this pawn is going to be so useful, probably. Or I take... Okay, no, but taking is definitely good. Because I take here, and either this pawn is now there as a target for my rook. Like, for instance, knight takes, I just take it. If queen takes, then I'm assuming, yeah, or the pawn takes, and you let my rook in, right? Like, rook a2? Why would I not play that? Bang. Gang, all just infiltrating straight away, somehow. The queen is coming in to try and, like, kick about the rook, but... It is now, this bishop is now pinned to the queen. Oh, do I have a tactic? Surely I have a tactic. Surely I make use, as I said, of this dark square bishop. Can I not play a move like knight takes e4? Okay, this needs a lot of calculation. Right, knight takes e4. The obvious move is, for instance, if bishop takes here, then we play rook takes the bishop, supported by this beautiful bishop here, and then we we are definitely winning there. So if knight takes, and you don't recapture this, and instead take my bishop, sacrifice the queen, take my rook. No, we're definitely better there. I love this. Knight takes e4. Exploiting the pin here. This bishop can't move, although my opponent may, they may go for this queen sacrifice with bishop takes uh, g7 here. Just because I don't really see another way to not just get crushed with this. And if you play a move like Rook B1 just holding here, that's not going to do. Because, oh my god, because Knight to C3? Maybe? That looks ridiculous, but it might work. Well, I guess the Rook comes to here and my Bishop's no longer hitting this. You know what? We're going to let my opponent play a move. Um, this, I cannot believe this idea of uh, locking this out and then just sending it with the A-pawn, taking and going in with the rook. Like, I can't believe that actually worked. Queen T2 was definitely not a good move. But to be honest, was recapturing with the pawn because after rook A2, what do you even play? Like maybe I literally just castle, I get my bishop out, I get my knight out and I play queen A5 and rook A8 and I just dominate Aliakhan's Ali gun on the uh, A-file, but my opponent's made a move. They've recaptured. Bang. Rook takes here. So they're now down a pawn. They did not go for the queen sacrifice line. They moved their queen back. I could even take here. 
This looks terrible for them, as well as the fact they don't have their E pawn anymore, which isn't just a pawn. It's a very important pawn because they might want to, they might have wanted to try and play um, E5. Hit. Wait a second, is like check? Mm, knight takes. I'm really, really thinking that this might be a good move to try and get rid of the knight and then play check. So we are, we're going to go for this here. Bishop to F5. With the very simple idea. I mean, yes, you now can defend this pawn. I probably should have taken the pawn. No, I like this. I still like this. Because now we... Wait, I could still take the pawn. Takes. Bishop takes. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Bishop c3 check is ridiculous. Look, check here. The king has to step across. Otherwise, you sack the rook. That's not going to be good. The king steps across. And it does hold the pawn then. But you've got to assume this was a good idea, right? I don't know. Surely. I'm thinking that we could go... Knight d7, knight f6. Hit the bishop. Maybe come into g4 with ideas of like knight to e3. The dark squares, ladies and gentlemen, are absolutely weak. And we, we have this... Like, we remove the dark square bishop here um and if you look at the position now my bishop has its choice along this whole diagonal supported by a bunch of pawns all of the play down here and down the queen side is locked out basically and this king is just horrible my opponent's trying to come in down here actually i probably have some discovery tactic now like no i think we'll start with knight to f6 there's no, like, rook a8. I don't really care about rook a7. Because I can just take the bishop. Yeah, the bishop has to move. I'm assuming we'll, we might see this. But then I sacrifice. And if you take, I take the rook for free. Yeah, so bishop cannot come here. Um, this works, right? Yeah, it takes. Sack the exchange temporarily. But we draw away the queen from the defense of this rook here on a1. To then pick up that rook. And then it really will be game over. I mean, look, we just pick up the rook here. Maybe there's like queen a2 and they're trying to come into like a4 with check. I don't care. I'll probably just play king f8. I'm now up a bishop and a pawn. This is ridiculous. What a game. Uh, the king comes in, obviously, which is a discovery onto this bishop. I think we just put the bishop straight back on that immortal c3 square from which we just dominate like everything. Also, crucially, we hold a1. Which just means you cannot get onto the A-file with this rook. We are just preventing all the play there. Now my opponent is, they're getting desperate. They're lashing forward with the pawns. I feel like I should just castle. If you take, I can take here. Hmm, I need my knight on, uh, on D4 is what I need. I might just play queen D7. Yeah, let's play queen D7. Trying to get into the game and around this king. Uh, if you take... Then I can take here. And now my rook has an avenue to get in. This is not looking good for my opponent at all. Look, we are sponsored by Nike here. Just do it. I'm not actually sponsored by Nike for those of you uh, that are hopeful for my chess YouTube career. That would be a great sponsorship to have, honestly. Mm, where do I go? Where do I go? How do I keep this attack going? I could bring the rook up like this. And then even if I go check and give it up for the knight, I'm just still going to be so winning. Actually, I really like this. Go off here with the knight, threatening this check, threatening this check. This check obviously comes with a fork. Um, and the check on f4. I don't know. Okay, we're going to go for this. And what I might do is sacrifice my knight for this pawn just to get the rook in. Because, I mean, my king is so safe with everything just being locked out here. I actually really like this idea of just sacrificing the knight for a pawn to bring the rook into uh, h3. King goes there. You see, I could play takes. Queen takes. Okay, I think we are going to do this. Takes here. Sacrifice the knight. Although maybe I've opened up an attack for my opponent. I don't know if this was actually very good. I'm going to take with the, the queen, actually. Because if we get a queen trade, this will just be the easiest end game. Okay, here we go. Get the queen trade. Nice little temporary sacrifice. We're just up 
three pawns. Um, yeah, I think this this should be very easy to win here. I maybe could even sacrifice this because all our pawns are connected. But again, this rook can't even come here. This is such a beautiful game. Um, I want to just play f6, if I'm being honest. Mm, does that leave this a bit? No, no one cares. F6. Just completely suppress the king. Um, yes, you can come across here, but I mean... Just drop back to h5. Yeah. I may I may time-lapse this endgame. I'm not entirely sure. It depends how long it stretches on for. Um, but I'm not sure there's too much of value to add. It's really just about, you know, getting these pawns rolling. Um, this bishop, I mean, this is just the easiest to play endgame because my opponent can't move any of their pawns. So I just don't have to be worried about it at all. I can go check. Yeah. Check here. Can't come in. You have to stay attached to the knight, so it's one of these two squares. If you go here, I give a check maybe. I can bring the bishop back to f6, force the knight to move. Yeah, we're just rolling. We're rolling with the pawns. And my king can always just stay here. Because this rook, I mean, this rook has so many moves to even think about getting active onto this uh, this A file here. Because they can't even come up and over because the bishop holds this square. So they'd have to go across, up, then over, then come in. That's like four moves. They will not have the time to do so, I can uh, I can guarantee you. Resignation. Okay, no need for an endgame time lapse, but... What a game. Let's look at the analysis. Okay, so here we are in the analysis. Um, of course, we didn't play perfectly there because there was no way that whole idea of launching all these pawns was ever going to be loved by the computer. But still, 92% accuracy. I don't think you'll be able to see it. My face cam's in the way. But 92% accuracy. Um, not too bad. Let's go through the game. D4, C5, which, oh my god, it thinks the old Benoni is an inaccuracy. It thinks the Karu Khan's an inaccuracy. There is no concept of book moves in the Lee Chess engine. Um, yeah, you see like thousands and thousands of masters have played this, so not really an inaccuracy. D5, knight to f6, we'll just keep the master's database open here because c4, you see the best move, or well, not the best move, but the most common move, um, which is also the best move, or one of them, is the move b5 there, um, attacking that center. Now, as I said, if we'd seen takes, I would have gone a6, takes, fianchetto this bishop, picked this up at a later date, gone over with the rooks and attacked down this side of the board. It's a very interesting way to play. However, my opponent played b3, uh, which is a little inaccurate, and we can get rid of the Masters database now. Um, and then, yeah, g6, best move. Whoa, I've just skipped all the way to the end of the game. My fault. Here we go, g6, best move. Bishop comes in here. I should have taken the pawn immediately, but I went bishop g7, e4, um, I just went d6. I think all the inaccuracies that I played were in the opening. Yeah, look here, okay. Wait, b4 best move? Okay. I mean, it doesn't hate a5. That's the second best move. a5. They didn't play a4. And again, I mean, it wants e5, but a4, again, second or third best move. Doesn't mind it at all. And after this, takes his best. Pawn takes. Rook A2. The engine, I mean, it's not the absolute best, but the engine does not hate what I've just done at all. And this position's actually really not great um, for my opponent. Their best move, Bishop A1, dropping the bishop back. Which, I mean, yeah. I, I, it's kind of tempting just to defend it with the queen, though, but obviously that is a blunder. Um, knight H5 was for some reason better than the move I played, which was knight takes... Oh, wait, no, is knight takes e4 even good? Oh, okay, so yeah, the computer's saying that if you give it a second, it says an accuracy just because they could sack the bishop um, here, and if they took the rook here, then we would just take, and actually, wait, sorry, no, they'd have to take my uh, my rook back, but then I go here, they bring the bishop back, I could play like this, rook takes. Okay, I'm just up a queen for a rook and a bishop here. I will gladly play this game uh, any day, but it preferred knight to h5 for some reason. Because then what? Oh, then this is held. But if they take, I just still take the queen. I don't understand. Oh, because after they recapture, I can then fight. I can take the bishop. Okay, that makes a bit more sense. 
Um, I decided to take this pawn generally because after they take and this dissolves, there is then no e pawn that I have to be worried about. Um, and rook takes g2 was the best move. I was suspicious that it might be, but I went for bishop here just because I wanted to take this bishop takes and play check. Um, the best move would have been for my opponent to sacrifice the exchange because of how strong this was. But their king simply moved. Knight to d7, best move. Rook comes across. Knight f6. Bishop here. Rook takes best move. Queen has to take, or doesn't have to take, but if it doesn't, that means just game over. And then takes here. And we're just up a load of material. Um, I went back to c3, the bishop, perfect. And we'll see how I converted this. I played queen d7. It likes queen c8. No, now it likes queen d7. So you've got to give Stockfish some time to catch up with me. Um, and then takes. I decided to take with this, just opening the h file. And I mean, here it's just a matter of converting a much better game. We'll see how dubious my uh, sacrifice was actually. Check here. And it really doesn't even hate... Um, it really doesn't even hate this. Look, it values... It, oh, sorry. Well, this was much worse. What am I doing? It wasn't. Give the engine a second yet again. I mean, it just doesn't see the absolute brilliance of my moves. Queen takes here. Just simplifying. Um, I'm a human, not an engine. So if I can trade the queens off, there is now no threat from my opponent. They can't move any of their pawns. My bishop will live forever, much like that great Oasis song. <laughs> um, and this rook's just not getting in to the position. My rook dominates this file, the bishop holds a1, and yeah, the king comes in, I just went f6, best move, went back here, knight comes in and just check, and then my opponent resigns, because they could have done this, actually, and lost a knight. Great, that would have been great. <laughs> okay, I mean, I don't really know um, why that's the best move, because I guess if their king moves back, I go... Bishop here, and they can't save their knight because rook here is held. Um, and if they go king back to here, then check. I was going to go for check here, and I can just go here anyway. Or even play uh, g5. Yeah, so the game is just completely lost. Wow. What a game. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, do all that stuff that helps the channel grow. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching again. Goodbye.